Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to have something a bit different. We're going to be discussing some of my tips and tricks for studying computer science uh, in the UK or abroad, you know. These are going to be some, you know, some obvious ones and maybe some things that you might not have thought of that might make an impact of when you're studying. So let's just dive straight in. So my first tip is create an ecosystem that works for you. So what I mean by that is I basically, I have an iPhone, I have uh, a MacBook and even the Apple Watch and AirPods. But the point is it's an ecosystem that works for me. When I do some code on here, cause I've got terminal and everything. If I'm missing any plugins, I can just search it in the terminal and get them from bash. Um, and if I have any files that I'm working on, they're accessible from my phone or from my laptop or my iPad as well. You know, it's an ecosystem where I don't have to think too much about what am I doing? Where are my files? Will I have access to something? Oh no, my laptop's dead, but my iPad's fine. I can just type my essays up on there or say my say I'm on the tube. I can, sometimes I do my work on my phone, um, just t jotting some stuff down onto a Word document and then I'll format it later and stuff like that. So create an ecosystem that works for you. You know, the same thing's possible on Windows. It's just that I pref preferred to go to the Mac because I already had an iPhone. So it was just easier to integrate all of that together. And trust me, the little things like that make a difference. You know, being able to work without the worry of is my work there or will I have any issues? That's just something you don't want to think about when you're at uni. You've got too many other things on your mind. So the second advice I have would be to get coding straight away. I didn't do this. <laughs> um, when I was at uni last year, so I'm in my second year now, a lot of the things that I was doing was just the bare minimum, whatever work they give, I would just do that and call it a day. But that really wasn't the correct way of going about things now that I think about it. And this year I've been doing some external projects, you know, because I got a job now. I've been working on Java a lot more and it's made me much more comfortable in my coding ability. And that's definitely something I would recommend, you know, even if it's simple applications, like something that adds together um, different equations or something that can, you know, break strings up dependent on certain requirements. These little tasks, even if you don't use them, just put them all on GitHub and say you've done them, you know, get used to packaging um, projects and getting them ready to deploy to basically anyone rather than just having to open up IntelliJ or or Eclipse or whatever to edit your code. Why not have a deployable working exe file or MSI file? These are the kind of things that you should be potentially working on during your first year and it really will make you more comfortable in working as a coder and get a better understanding of what are the requirements needed by a business. So when you're coding something, don't forget to test stuff because one of the things I got slated out for work was I forgot to test things thoroughly. Um, think of it from the perspective of a user. If, if thousands of people are using this application in a work environment, I'm sure there's an idiot out there who would do something that was definitely not on your mind when you were coding this. So try and foolproof your applications and things like that. So definitely get stuck in straight away and start coding in your spare time. My next advice, despite all of that, is have some chill time and don't burn out. So what I mean by that is the biggest thing I had last year was, you know, going out for socials, clubbing, um, doing work, doing having a job on the weekends. I basically gave myself zero days off. So the downside of that was by the time I reached three months into uni, so around January last year, February, I was completely gone. I was getting up at bed, out of bed at 4 p.m. You know, I was burnt out all the time. Energy levels were really low, not really getting productive work done. And you don't want that for yourself if you're going to be hitting uni. You want a consistent stride of completing tasks, feeling good about yourself and everything. So get your chill time organized. So like even right now, I'm working a job on two days a week. i am obviously got uni and I go out and I now do YouTube videos, you know, managing those things. And I play games to be fair. 
um, managing all of that and watching TV and Netflix, you know, the list goes on within a week without burning myself out. It's something I'm still challenging myself to find out what my limits are. I burnt myself out towards the end of um, last term. So December, the last two weeks, if you had been hanging out with me, you would have known I wasn't the same person as I was about a week before, you know, energy levels were low. But um, I grinded through the work because you have no choice. So just remember that in the future, though, for anyone who's new to uni, just make sure you have your chill time. And what I mean by chill time is it's time where it's just you and just doing nothing, essentially, just chilling. <laughs> uh, listen to some music or watch some TV and lie in bed. It's the best way to recover your energy levels, I, I would say. And the final piece of advice I have for anyone starting uni, just in general, or for computer science especially, is find a good study group. Find yourself a group of friends that will always be there for you, no matter what it is, and help you, help them and you help, they'll help you um, get through this degree. You know, I'm we're lucky to have uh, three or four people that we hang out with, you know, and they're reliable people to the extent where if I'm struggling at work, on work, or they are, one of us will be able to pull the other one up, essentially keeping everyone intact. You know, if you don't understand a topic, they'll teach you the topic. Or if you understand a topic, you teach them the topic. If you can teach someone a topic, it means you're good enough to be able to answer questions on that topic. Same thing applies for them. If they can teach you the topic very well, then they're good enough to answer those questions. You know, going through uni is not about going at it alone. It's work in a group and a group study group is basically I think the best way to get through uni because if I had to go through the last year or even this year alone I'd stand no chance in my personal opinion my work would be not as good as it is today so those four key things I'd say would be what I'm looking for as advice for someone who's starting uni and if I need those things last year I would be up much greater level than I am right now so I'm giving you that advice to get that step up on everyone else who's going to uni so thanks guys for watching this video I hope you found it really enjoyable and there's some really good tips in here um, if there's any feedback or any questions just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you but please like subscribe and I'll hopefully see you soon see you guys